Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery. Today I want to go over the silverback release and more importantly just steps to being able to start and use back tension effectively. Um, so I've got my knock-on and Carter silverback knock to it and then my standard Trueball HT two finger release that I customize and use myself so that I can show you how everything just carries over between all three style releases. What I'm going to do is actually take the silverback release here I'm going to hook it up with my scale on my draw board. I'm going to draw it back um, by hand and let you see the poundage that it trips at. I'm also going to show you what the uh, poundage that my bow is set at for holding weight. So you can kind of get an idea on the variance between the two. I'm going to go over preload, the right muscles to use, the wrong way to do it, the right way to do it, and then just show you some shots between all three of these releases so that you can see how my shot style, my follow through, everything exactly 100% the same throughout all three. Alright, so I'm going to start out by trying to do this as slowly as I can. Scale is zeroed out here. I've got my release and a piece of string hooked up. Let's just see kind of what I'm looking at. Just a piece of D-loop string knotted together. I've got the release in my hand. I am going to, like I said, do this as slowly as possible three times just to see kind of an average on it and let you see what everything looks like. bit over 18 on that one. Same thing, a little over 18, looked like maybe 18 and a half, 18.4. I'm going to slow the video down and actually do a, a screenshot so you can see each time what it is exactly. That one's a little over the 18 mark, so pulled a little bit harder on that one, but let you see that everything is pretty even, pretty good on them. All right, so this time around, I want to go over the importance of keeping the tension the same between the first and the second finger, or the third, if you hang that on there as well. Using, it, using this release differently each time, it's going to cause the internals here to be loaded differently on the hook on the release and it's going to make it go off a little bit different poundage each uh, each single time. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to pull, this is my normal pulling angle, so you can kind of see how my hand is here angle wise. What I'm going to do with this one is pull it pretty much all the weight on the index finger and let you see what the poundage is where it trips there. So you can see that one a little bit over 20. I actually had to pull pretty hard on that one. Um, that's with pretty much all the pressure on that index finger. So as you can see, when I was getting pretty consistent readings in that 18 mark, that one's a little bit different for sure. All right, so for this next one here, what I'm gonna do is pull with majority of the pressure here on my middle finger. This is, um, normal way that I would hold the release. I'm actually going to pull it and hold it a lot of the weight here and let you see what it would fire at, at that at the weight at that point. See and that one was less. That was about a, a, a whole pound less so um, than my normal readings. I was around the 17 mark. So as you can see, there's a lot of variance depending on how you weight your fingers. You want to make sure that you're doing this consistently. This is a really good precursor to using a hinge release because it's going to teach you how to weight these fingers consistently from shot to shot and get that uh, point down. So if you do decide to go from, you know, release like the silverback evolution, something like that, onto a hinge, you'll already have that down pat. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you really quickly. This is with my bow in the press, in my drawboard, rather, and this is holding weight for it, so just under 17 pounds with the stops barely touching. So I'm pulling more than that, obviously. I wanted to show you kind of a comparison between where the silverback I've got set up to break versus the holding weight on the bow to go over my preload, preload and everything that I'll talk about on the rest of the video now. 
right, so now that we have all the logistics out of the way, let's talk about the release and also the style that you're going to be using for this type of shot. I go over in depth with this in several other venues. Um, I've done some YouTube videos just on back tension, pulling through your shot. I've done instructional videos on how to set up a preload, how to be consistent with it, and what that looks like on your shot too. I'm going to link in the description below some of those videos so that you can go back and reference them and see them if you're interested. Today I'm going to do a really quick overview of the entire process, talk about the release, and just kind of combine all that together really quick. So, to begin with, why would you want to use the Silverback release over a Carter Evolution or over a Stand Element? Well, for me, on my testing, I like that you can use a two-finger release. And you've heard John Dudley talk about this, if you've gotten one of these releases, I'm sure, that using two fingers, you have less influence over the release, less ways to torque the release, do anything you know goofy with it, and that's going to make you more accurate on target. And that's completely 100% true, and that is one of the reasons why I like a two-finger release over a three or a four. Now, the other thing that I have found through my testing is that when I use a two-finger release, I can drop this third finger completely off so I don't use the nub up here as a resting point. And what that does is it allows me to get my hand back and allows me to drop my rear elbow a little bit. It's still going to be in line. You've still seen my alignment videos, so it's still not going to be in a negative you know, plane where it's lower than my release hand, but it allows me to get my rear shoulder lower and in place better. And to me, that's a huge benefit. I can see it on target on my float. My float is incredibly more steady. And also, as I go to pull through my shot, because the shoulder is lower down, it's in line better with this front shoulder and it doesn't make my sight pin want to drop down on target. That's why I like to use these two finger releases. The other portion of that is the silver back has a lot of adjustments on it and you can really customize it to get the exact feel that you need for your shot whenever you have it break at full draw. There's, there's, to begin with, there's springs inside of it. Each one are going to be weighted a little bit different. It comes with a 19 pound spring in it and you can change that lower or higher. Um, that way you can match how you're pulling on your bow with your preload and also match your holding weight. So some bows, hunting bows especially, have lower holding weights. Some people with target bows like to have an extremely high holding weight. You can get all of that covered with this. Now beyond that, there's an adjustment screw here in the bottom and that's what's going to help you fine tune the way you need that release to work. I have messed with the adjustments down to just a fraction of a turn to get the correct poundage to trip every time I uh, pull through my shot so that I'm not overworking and pulling myself off target and so it's not firing too soon before I really get engaged with the shot. I find it's very important to be engaged in my shot and be dynamic in it, just meaning that my preload is here, my arm and everything is, is good, my bow arm is good, and I want to start pulling a little bit and I want to get some added tension built in. That added tension, when you do that, it steadies everything up more for you. Um, think of it the same way as if you just you know, get a broomstick and hold it out in front of you with a loose arm. If you hold it out in front of you with a loose arm, it's going to wobble and move around. If you flex your arm and hold it out in front of you, it's not going to move as much. So it's the same concept when you want to get engaged with your release as you go to pull through your shot. Um, with this, I've got it adjusted and you can see where it went off there is right around the 18, 18 and a half, 19 pound mark somewhere in that area. Holding weight on my bow is just under 17 pounds. So I'm pulling about one to two pounds above what my holding weight is whenever I go to execute my shot. Now that's, you know, in the past I've, I've done more than that. I've really pulled my bow really hard, but I found that with the way that my draw length and my loop length is set up, I've gotten a lot of my movement, a lot of my flex, you know, that I can do with my back, all that's already gone and I'm, I'm actually doing my preload and my, my uh, flexing and squeezing on that muscle. I'm moving a lot of that together to begin with because I found it holds me steadier on target. So that's why I don't have as much room to move, so I need a less poundage on here. Now if you're battling target panic or something crazy like that's going on, um, John Dudley recommends to start it out five pounds over holding weight. Um, I've actually found that if you have a really low holding weight, say on a hunting bow with a really high let off, you might want to do that, especially um, just to, to help steady yourself up. Because the more holding weight that you get to a point, and it's different for everybody, everybody's bodies are a little different, but you'll steady yourself up so you'll see that. You'll be able to pull into the shot a little bit more and you'll say, hey, I steadied up a lot more right there. And that's what you're going to be looking for. All right, so let's take a moment here and let's just talk about your form. Your form is going to need to be set up a little bit different when you go to use a back tension saw release than maybe what you've been able to get away with 
using an index or punching a trigger or doing something like that. And it's all going to revolve around your front shoulder. You hear a lot of people talk about when they have a tension style release that they're pulling and pulling and it's inconsistent. Um, a lot of that's going to revolve around the front shoulder and then the other part of that is going to revolve around their preload. I'm going to go over the front shoulder here first. Biggest mistake that I see is that people have a high front shoulder. It's up. When it's up like this, it's not natural, just as if you were going to raise your hand up. When it's low and in place right here, this socket will come together with the compression of the bow that you're pulling and holding it full draw. And as you go to work through your shot and pull on it, it's got a place that it's going to stop here. You're going to have a little bit of push and a little bit of hold against uh, you know, the bow handle, against the grip, pushing towards the target. Um, just naturally because you're having to hold that bow there and that along with the shoulder being in place is going to allow you to pull through the shot without the shoulder doing any kind of movement. If you don't and you already have the shoulder up like this, as you go to pull through your shot, that shoulder comes up and it comes back. So you'll feel like you're pulling the heck out of that bow. But all you're doing is allowing that bow to come back with you. And that'll make it really hard for you to fire one of these releases. You want to make sure you have that shoulder down and forward so you're moving that scapula away from the backbone and your release side muscles have a place to move. So that's going to be the number one. So the other side of this is, like I said, the preload. Preload is going to be way less complicated than what most people think. All you're doing is using this muscle right here, this one that runs right over the top of your shoulder blade that comes from your spine over to the shoulder joint. And all it is is flexing the muscle, just like if you were to flex your bicep. No different. All you have to do is learn that muscle memory to where when you get to full draw and you anchor here and you go to bring that elbow up and around you, that's you flexing this muscle. And that's what you need to get consistent with. If you get consistent with that same flex and that same tension going into it every time, then as you go to pull through your shot, you're just continuing that flex and that tension. And that's what moves this release hand back. And that's what loads the pressure on this release. Now this is something that I went over in depth on an instructional video that I did. And that's gonna be linked in the description below. All right guys, so the last thing that I wanna talk about here is your release, follow through and execution. What you want to look for with your elbow here is you want to be able to pull it straight back. You don't want to moving around behind you or moving off to the side. That's going to move your dot and your pin laterally on target. You're going to start pulling yourself off target. You want to have that straight back pull. The way that I teach a lot of my students, the way that I'll talk to them, just give them a visualization, is to think about pulling this release hand to their shoulder, to the top of the shoulder. And a lot of times what I'll do is when my shot breaks, I'll let my hand kind of droop down at my wrist and I'll see if I touch the top of the shoulder. If I don't, if I'm out here, then I know that I let my hand pull out away from my face. Now that's going to be a problem. It's usually going to lead to a left miss on a target for a right-handed archer. So that's something that I use just as a visual to be able to pull through. Now I've got all three of my releases that I'm going to use here to give you a shot to let you see. My timing, my follow through, all of it's going to look the same through my uh, silver back here, which is a tension style release. I've got my knock to it out, which is a thumb button release. And I've also got my two finger HT hinge that I use from Trueball. I'm going to do three shots, let you see them all. Um, the reason that my timing and my shot process and everything is going to be very similar is because of my preload. So I'll preach that a lot, but that's what's going to help steady me up on target. And it's what's going to help me have consistent timing throughout each shot because my movement needed to fire that release is going to be the exact same and that means that my setup of them on poundage or the way that it needs to be to depress the trigger, that tension there, or the movement of my hinge is all going to be the exact same. Silver back. Knock to it, thumb release.
and HT hinge. All three of those are going to be the exact same, and that's because of that preload. Alright guys, last order of business for the day that I wanted to go over really quick. These last chance presses, like you see me use all of my presses that I offer on my website for Black Friday. I'm going to have them all on sale at my dealer cost plus shipping. Absolutely zero markup. It's going to be able to celebrate a great company and last chance archery and their partnership with me. So I want to give thanks to them for that. I also want to give thanks to all my viewers, anyone that follows me and be able to say thank you for the views, thank you for the shares, spreading the word out, and give you a great deal on presses. So this uh, sale is gonna run Thanksgiving day all the way through the weekend. So Sunday at midnight central time, that's when I'm gonna stop the sale. All of these presses are gonna be, like I said, cost, dealer cost, plus shipping, and we do ship to outside of the country. These presses are gonna come directly from LCA, if it's outside of the country, send me an email, give me your address and which press you would like to purchase and I'll get you an updated shipping price for you. All right, lastly, all my DVDs, got seven now that have come out. These are all gonna be on sale as well. So I'm gonna offer all of these normal price on them is $25, they're gonna be $15. All seven in a set is normally 160. I'm actually gonna sell all seven now for 105. That's going to be in the sale as well. I'm going to list everything price-wise down in the description below. It's going to be a huge description. <laughs> It'll have all the presses, their prices, my DVDs and their prices as well. Guys, I thank you for watching all these videos. I'm very thankful. I hope you, your family, your friends, anyone you're going to get together with for the Thanksgiving holidays, hope you all have a great one. Very blessed to have you uh, be able to call you friends and uh, be able to have what I would say is family as well. We're all an archery family. Appreciate you watching the video today. I look forward to seeing you soon.